Folks, the time has come here today on After Prison Show. I'm getting ready to share with you a prison story that I've never told before. One that is embarrassing, borderline not good, and really like, why would you ever tell anybody about this? But when you do YouTube for a living, uh, you know, you put your whole life out there on the line and on Front Street on full display for the amusement of you, the fans, the supporters, the viewers of this here channel. And I, I greatly appreciate having each and every one of you guys. A lot of you really seem to be enjoying the videos and I'm enjoying creating these videos, getting back to what a lot of people have referred to as some classic after prison show here. So thank you for the support. And I don't think today is gonna disappoint neither. Anyways, let's get into this thing, right? Today I'm getting ready to share with you guys a couple of prison stories. I think it's three, there might be like 3.5, three and a half. And all of these stories relate to in all over yourself in prison. In one form, fashion, or variety of exactly that. Now most all of these stories, all of these stories, involve yours truly. Hence the fact that I wanted to get dressed up today. You need to look the part, right? And I don't want you just looking at me like a guy who may or may not have shitted all over himself a couple of times while serving time. But you know what? It's time that you serve. And in a lot of cases, you don't make the rules, but yet you have to follow them or risk getting in trouble. And sometimes the rules, the regulations, the procedures are gonna leave you in a predicament where uh, if you gotta go, the only option you may have in that exact moment when it's do or die is to hit the eject button like Top Gun and Goose. Hit the eject button. <laughs> right in the old trousers. And don't sit here and act like you, as a grown person, ain't never done it. You haven't. Not even, not even a little bit. Not even like had like a, uh, like a close call. Like you gotta check to make sure one way or another. No? That never happened to you? Me neither. Me neither. So, it's with all of that being mentioned that what do you say we go ahead and we dive across the legs and hold it. Boy, almost blew a blood vessel in my eye right there. Head first. I've been to this disgusting video. Man, I know I'm not about to sit here and watch a video about some story time shitting on yourself. Oh, yes, I am, though. Let's go, Joe. Yeah, I just know you shit it all over yourself in prison. <laughs> you was a little dookie stain. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, the first story I want to share with you guys happened back in 2007, I believe. Now, back during 2007, I was serving a year and a half prison sentence. As a matter of fact, it would be the first prison sentence that I would ever serve. I would come home in the early stages of 2008, February, as a matter of fact. And back during this bid, sentenced to a year and a half, I would do, I think, 14 months of that. I did 11 months in the jail, just waiting to get transferred to prison. So I really only had like four months left or three and a half months left when I got to prison. Of course, I was thinking like this was the coolest thing in the world. I done gained a stripe on my convict badge of honor, basically. Yeah, hey, boy. Yeah, I served time. I've also been to prison as well. How long did I do? It don't matter. It don't matter that I only did three months my first time. I think it was about three months. You couldn't tell me nothing back then. Uh, 2007, we'll never forget, you know, Lil Wayne was jumping. I think he came out with like 70 songs. I wanted to be like the white Lil Wayne, do rag tied, stupid tight. Uh, but yeah, everybody was listening to Lil Wayne back then. But that doesn't have anything to do with shitting on myself. So let's go ahead and get to that. I would end up at a road camp, Caroline County. You couldn't tell me nothing, boy. I was an OG. Getting to this work center, basically, which is the lowest level type of facility that you could serve time at in the prison system here in my state of Virginia. And at these road camps slash work centers, they mean what they say. They're little prison encampments right by roads and you work while there. And most of what you do there is either work on a farm, in a park, maybe out on an actual road crew, digging ditches, cleaning ditches, cleaning up debris, that sort of thing. But at these type of facilities, you really don't have a lot of people there. This facility that I'm talking about housed, I think, about 140 prisoners. They fed you really well. It, it was a decent place to serve time at. There were a lot of pros 
and a lot of cons, but it wasn't a bad place to have to serve time at. One of the downsides to this place would be in relation to the number of toilets compared to the number of prisoners. This place was shaped like an L. So you had one wing and then another wing. One wing was the smoking wing. I lived in the non-smoking wing, but people still smoked because back in 2007, you could do that. It would be 2011, the year that they stopped smoking, or 2009, I can't remember. It was one of those years where they stopped smoking in Virginia DOC. But you got 70 prisoners in either wing. And you got, I believe it was two urinals and two commodes. And you know what was nice about this place was these were actually real porcelain toilets. Yeah, they was. A porcelain toilet. When you're serving time, man, hey, ain't nothing like being able to sit on some porcelain versus having to sit on something stainless steel. Can you imagine how cold your cheeks are gonna be on something like this? Quite cold. Especially if you ain't got no mud flaps, neither. Meaning like some sort of cushions you can put down while you're trying to fecal cake. Each housing unit had two urinals, two toilets. Now there was also a downstairs basement area as well that had a whole run of toilets uh, and urinals. But not all of the time would you have access to that basement area and to those toilets, to that restroom. Uh, downstairs in the basement was also where the showers were located at. It was my first time ever taking, uh, taking a shower with a whole bunch of other people as well. But that's a story for another time. What it's like to, what it's really like to take a, a shower in prison. Yeah, we might need to dive all up into that in the future. This one particular time, the basement was closed. All prisoners exit the basement, rec area closed, or whatever they refer to the basement as. Report back upstairs to the dorm area. So we're up there, we're locked down, and it, I guess it was right after chow. It had to be. And they had to have some kind of a bean tray or some kind of a tray that's gonna make your stomach just hit the bubble guts immediately upon getting done eating that. I think it was around lunchtime, as well, so it was a lunch meal that did this. It was probably some sort of a beans and rice, maybe a chili mac, whatever it was right after lunchtime, the toilet area was booked up. I mean, look, this is like, uh, you know, trying to get a hotel in New Orleans during Mardi Gras. You ain't gonna be able to find one. Everything is booked. You got both toilets and both dorms completely occupied. You got a line outside the club to be able to get in there. Dudes is waiting outside of these toilet stalls like chicks in a club waiting to go into the bathroom. Dudes is reading magazines, gossiping. Hey, yeah, you hear about what up? And all of a sudden, it hit me. I had to shit real bad. Man, I didn't know if I was gonna be able to hold this or not. So when you when your bubble when the bubble guts start to hit to happening, a deep a deep, I sound like a foghorn leghorn right there. So when the bubble gut started to happen, you know, I immediately try to go start scoping out the restroom area and realize this thing is, hey, this thing's booked. I go around to the other dorm, same situation over there. There's not a toilet available at all, not a stall at all. So you got a guard station between the two housing units in this little hallway type of an area. And, you know, I noticed that he's sitting right there, but I'm just trying to figure out can I hold this? I need to be able to hold this because it's looking like it's going to be a while before I get an opportunity to, to use the bathroom. But I guess it was realizing that and also that, oh my God, I really, really got to, I mean, I got to go and realizing that I couldn't go. Sort of made that IBS, that irritable bowel syndrome just feel like it was getting a little explosive, right? Like... You know what they say, like the turtle head situation? Well, I don't really, I got like the fizzling going on. The what? The fizzling? What you talking about? I know you ain't talking about no soda pop. My God, that's disgusting. I'm pacing at this point, uh, you know, starting to break out into a cold sweat, not knowing what the fuck to do. I'm looking at these urinals. Like, man, if I do what I got, if I do this, if I drop the pants right there at that urinal and I just start shitting all over that thing. I will never live this down. But I'm only doing three months. I ain't got but three months to be here. I mean, how long could they really remember that? 10 years later, they'd probably be like 10 years ago, right here. There's a monument, as a matter of fact, carved out of Lisa Soap to commemorate what took place here. The Battle of Joe Guerrero's Bows all over this urinal. Oh. I'm sorry, talking about this sort of has the guts bubbling just a little bit. 
little PTSD, IBS. Hope I can hold it long enough to get through this video. You gotta make it that much more real. Let's share a prison story time about shitting your pants and also have to shit real bad while filming it. Who does it more authentic, I ask. I'm rocking back and forth like a toddler with ADD who just ate an entire pack of Skittles. Can toddlers have ADD? Or is that just what they say all kids have? At this point, I know I can't wait any longer, so now I'm ready to risk the extreme. I've got to go talk to the police. And anytime you approach the police, it doesn't matter if you're at a level one road camp, work center. Prisoners, they're going to look at you. They're going to wonder what you're talking about, especially when it looks like you're kind of begging, maybe even crying a little bit. But I had to go up to this officer like, hey, yo, look, I need you to break all procedure right now and allow me downstairs. I know that this is completely unorthodox right here. Like, what could I possibly do other than just go use the restroom downstairs? But officer, I can't hold it. I'm going to shit all over the place if you don't let me go down there. Do you know this guy had the audacity to laugh at me? <laughs> you got to go real bad, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Probably was that Chili Mac, wasn't it? No, I can't let you down there, Stick. I can't let you down. There's rules and procedures put in place. I don't know if you really have to shit. This could be an escape plan that you're trying to put into motion right now. You know, they pay me $12 an hour back in 2007, probably what a guard was making, to prevent such tactics from being successful. By this point, I got, sh I got like sh shit tears in my eyes. Like, I'm, my, my eyes are glassing over. I can't, even, I can't even really hear. My ears are ringing. Has this ever happened? Like, you had to go that bad? Eyes watering over, glassing over. You can't sit still. This dude is denying me. And it's not like I can just say forget him and just go downstairs myself because there's a cage. There's a gate. Like, he's got, a, he's got the key. So now I'm thinking about risking everything. I'm only doing three months, but I've got this shit so bad. I'm ready to hit this dude. Mm, take the keys and just, I got to go. I got to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got. Never have heard of a story happening like this, but could you imagine a prisoner risking an escape charge just in an effort to get to a commode? And nobody would believe him. Uh, yeah, that's what they all say. 10 years. Guilty as charged. Dog, I just had to shit. I mean, bring in a psychologist. I got the IBS. Psychology? The guard denied me. There was nothing I could do. My only other option was shit in the sink, shit in the urinal, kick in the door to one of them stalls and snatch whoever was in there, probably jerking off, up off of that commode. Boom! Come here, you got to go. I got to go. But I wasn't built like that. I just got to be honest. Had I been so, I'd probably... I've done something like that. By this point, I can't even see. Sitting down ain't even an option because if I do so, it's over. People trying to talk to me like, hey, Joe, you gonna go play volleyball when they open the race? Shut the fuck up! Shut up! Shut the fuck up! I can't talk right now! I don't know how long it was. Probably three minutes. But it felt like three eternities. All of a sudden, I heard them keys get the jangling. Jangle, 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 jangle. Jangle, jangle, jangle. I heard that key enter that key slot and that lock pop. And the officer come out yelling. The basement and rec yard are now... Get out of my way! Get out of my way! Is there a better storyteller on the internet? No. In that particular case, I made it to the toilet and about 93% successfully. Not gonna lie, I shit myself a little bit, especially during that 100 yard dash downstairs to them commodes down there. Prisoners was laughing at me too. Damn, look at Joe, hey boy, that boy look like Speedy Gonzalez. Never ate another Chili Mac tray during that three month stay, I can promise you that. Oh, they got what on the tray? Shit, you can, hey, you can miss me with that. I can't even look at a box of hamburger helper out here in the free world the same. My wife said, hey, you want to do some hamburger? No, 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 I, I don't eat hamburger helper, no. Story number two. This took place at Indian Creek during my last time being locked up. I've shared a little bit of this story before, but I'm going to focus 
entirely on the shitty pants part of this. Well, at Indian Creek, drugs were rampant at this institution. This was a level two, and it was a drug treatment place. Uh, a therapeutic community, as they refer to it as. Prisoners are here for one of three reasons, well, one of four reasons. Behavioral modification, youth offenders, drug treatment, or for re for reentry, which is why I was there, for reentry and behavioral modification, I guess, because I kept breaking the rules, tattooing all of the time. One of the craziest things that I realized when I got there was, this is a, a, a therapeutic community, it's heavily geared toward addiction, and you got dudes doing drugs so much at this joint. We were sitting in group one day. There was this bodybuilder type of a dude. He was sitting in the group. And then all of a sudden, he just fell out of his chair. Boom! Needle in his fucking vein. Right there in group, dude was shooting up. Like, what the fuck? I was like, damn! This a drug treatment place. You ain't never gonna make it stick, man. You can't even sit through a drug meeting without doing some dope. I would probably not want to know what happened to that dude. Can only hope he made it. Chances of that probably are not very good, unfortunately. But with the fact that the drugs were such a big problem, snitching was also a huge problem at this facility. In fact, they, they programmed you to be a snitch, to be a robo-cop, so to speak, an inmate police. Well... The inmate police did their job this one particular day and ended up getting our entire building, building three, locked down for a major shakedown-like event. Now, we had heard about an event like this taking place in building one. Building one was the intake building. We called it the bus terminal. When you got to the prison, you went to building one. Uh, you stayed there for about a month, maybe, a, maybe even three months. I can't really remember how long it was. But you stayed there until they tried to break you like a wild horse in Yellowstone. Like they was just trying to pound into you that you was going to be sitting through groups. You ain't where you used to be at. The party's over. Or at least that's what they wanted to convince you. But it really wasn't because the shit was jumping at this prison. But we had heard that Building 1 had a similar like event take place down there. Where they locked the entire building down, came in with the goon squad, and conducted a massive complete housing unit piss test. I had never seen anything of the sort. They came in, flipped over tables, boom! Get back to your bunk area, get back to your bunk area, boom! Flipping tables, throwing chairs at prisoners, boom! I told you get back to your bunk area! This is a lockdown, and we are piss testing the entire building. Now mind you, a lot of dudes in here start freaking out immediately because a lot of them are dirty. They all been getting high where well, a lot of them have been. I haven't been. But dudes is running around freaking out trying to hit the water fountain, trying to get as much water as they can in an effort to try to flush out whatever they got, right? They want to be able to pass this piss test. Now, me, I'm also drinking water as well, but not because I'm worried about being dirty. I'm worried about the stage fright. I know that this is about to be the worst experience of my incarcerated life. One of them. If there was a top 10, top 10 worst moments from my incarcerated time, from my years in prison, whoo, boy, hey, this is definitely one of them. I already know, man. I've been on the hot list before because of ibuprofen. I've gone through piss tests where you got, where they call you over the intercom to the library, to the gym, down to medical, and you're on the hot list. You're getting piss tests once a week, every two weeks, twice a week. They would just try to jam you up, and I'm I'm on this list with dudes who are definitely getting high. So I've been through what these type of urinalysis are like, man. They talk shit to you. They're looking at your, your private parts, and they're like, hey, boy, that, hey, that's it. That's it right there. <laughs> oh, I know your girl done left you. And I mean, they are just degrading the shit. They get off on this. Maybe not literally, but it's just something for them to laugh at. And then when you're struggling and squirming because you can't go, man, that shit ain't nothing but the worst. I swear to God, and this is so embarrassing for me to, to admit, but there were times when I was on the hot list that when I'm waiting to go, surrounded by dudes who's laughing and joking, you got the gang unit officers, the investigators, all these young cocky little motherfuckers who think they run in this prison, knowing all the little G codes and all this shit, talking shit to you while you're trying to use the bathroom, and then other prisoners are laughing at you. There were numerous times 
when I was on this hot list that I would tell these dudes straight up, man, I can't go and I got the shit now. I got the shit now. And they would let me shit and sit there and just degrade the shit out of me. Then I got to get up, take the piss test. Once I, hey, once I shit it, I was good. That's like, you know, <laughs> terrible trauma. Terrible trauma. And then I just got used to it and they got used to me. You know, at first, the first couple of times, hey, hey, boy, hey, he all discombobulated. Little poopy pants right there. Little dookie stain. Yeah, it was probably me, you're right. But after a while, I would just talk shit right back to him. Yeah, bitch, I got the shit. You get off on looking at bitches all day long is what you do for a living. What do you tell them girls out there? You a fucking Navy SEAL? Fuck you. All right, I can take the test now. Wipe my ass. Wipe it for me. Nah, I ain't even gonna wipe it. I hope you smell, and I ain't flushing. Put some water on that shit. But anyway, that wasn't even the story. So they come in with this nationwide housing unit piss test. Dudes are, dudes are flabbergasted. Some of these guys haven't experienced what I've experienced already being on the hot list. I know this is going to be a shit show, literally. Dudes are running around, oh my God, look at what I can do, look at what I can do. Like they got to, not only are they trying to chug water to be able to piss, well now they've chugged so much water that they got to piss. You got dudes pissing in bags. Coffee bags, chip bags, down in the floor in vents. There was one dude who had to use the bathroom because also think about this, when you're trying to flush your system, you're not just flushing any type of drugs up out of your system. You're gonna flush that dookie up out too. You're gonna have to shit. So now you got dudes who gotta shit so bad. Some even went as far, and I didn't do this, okay? <laughs> this wasn't me. You got dudes standing behind a little wall locker, which is only this wide, trying to shit into a bag. <laughs> oh, I gotta go, what is going on in here? Complete chaos taking place during all of this. So, so when it was your turn to go use the bathroom to take this piss test, you go up in there and you're either gonna go or you're not gonna go, and if you can't go, you're gonna get degraded. <laughs> they're gonna talk the you know the most shit they can to you, and then they're gonna put you behind what was the wall of shame, which was the shower area. So I would end up in the wall of shame behind there for just a little bit, but I couldn't take it because I knew the only reason that I can't piss is because this dude's screaming on me. I got the bubble guts, I got the shit. I can't stand back here with these other people who just can't piss for you know, the stage fright reasons. And don't get me wrong, my stage fright was was real too. So real, in fact, it would give me the bubble guts. But I knew how to, hey, I knew how to, I knew how to take care of mine. So I tell the guy, hey, RoboCop, gang task force investigator, what the fuck do you want? Hey, I got, I got, I got, a, I got a shit, man. Dude would let me shit. And then I took the piss test and I was good to go. A lot of people got locked up that day. I think it was like 40 people failed them drug test, all went to the hole. Trauma, what serving time can do to you. Woo. Sometimes they'll be like, yo, you got 10 seconds to take this piss test or I'm just gonna write it down as a dirty urine. You're never gonna go home. That'll help, that, that, that'll certainly help. I, I'm kidding, I'm being sarcastic. This final story about shitting myself takes place or potentially may or may not have shitting myself, shitted myself. Takes place at Indian Creek as well, and this one took place during visitation. Now, during this particular visit, I had not had a visit in over four years. I had no communication with anybody at all, and it was not until I lucked up and got a pen pal through a friend of mine who unfortunately has since passed away. Rest in peace to my homeboy, Justin Hobbs. He was an awesome guy. I went to school with this guy. We ran into each other again in prison, and he was the person who introduced me to the Craigslist pen pal way of life. Like, I had no idea about this. When me and Justin ran into each other, like, he was always writing letters, and I would ask him, hey, what are you doing? Like, how are you getting all these pen pals? And he was like, dude, I got an ad on Craigslist. You know, saying, hey, look, I'm locked up, and I'm just looking for somebody to write, and he had hella, hella, hella women writing to him. Now, before I was able to do this for myself, which I would end up doing not only for myself, but for other prisoners as well, my homeboy Justin would put me on to a friend of a pen pal of his. Now, I've told a story about this chick, probably a couple, but this was the craziest chick that I had ever met in my life. And there was no way in hell we were, one, gonna ever be together, two, 
I was ever going to see this chick when I came home. She looked like and reminded me of the woman from that movie Misery by Stephen King. Like, I felt like if I ever did come home to her, I would end up tied up in a basement somewhere. She was batshit crazy. She was huge as well. Her head was the size of a five-gallon water cooler. This chick was Quasimodo for reals. And no disrespect, she was a nice enough person. Okay, and I'm not trying to say that I was better than her, like, or that she was ugly. She was just a big ass woman, right? And crazy as shit. She worked at a Title Max company. I'll never forget that. I said, you know, I've heard about Title Max companies. Uh, you know, I've heard that they charge an outrageous APR. And she was like, 37%. <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, that's fucking crazy. But, um, you know, I can't remember if that was the exact number, but it was that insane laugh that took place after that was one sign. Another sign was she showed up one day to visit me with blood all over her face and she had literally fallen in the parking lot, landed on her face on the curb and did not go to the hospital, just came in there to see me. And I mean, everybody's looking at me like I didn't hit this chick or something. Like, how are you in visitation with your whole head leaking? Like, you need to be at the ER. So hence the fact Shorty was crazy. But before all the craziness came to play, there was the first visit. I didn't even know she was crazy at this point. I'm going into this visit, my first visit in over four years. I don't know this chick, but from maybe a phone call, a letter, and now this visit. And I need to put on, I need to play my position and make sure that, you know, regardless of whatever comes of this, hey, I got a friend or maybe more I didn't know at the time. I don't want to screw this up, I guess is where I'm going. Here's somebody willing to come see me. I need to make sure that I am on my, my, my P's and Q's. I need to make sure I'm on my best behavior up in here. I've been talking like a prisoner for seven fucking years, you know. Hey, yo, shorty, I'm trying to tell you when I come home, I'll be like, Eminem out that bitch. You know, man, hey, I was all to pieces. But shorty comes to see me. She brings the quarters. Bring them quarters because they got vending machines in here. They got burgers, fish sandwiches, chicken sandwiches, chicken nuggets. They got Eminem Skittles, Reese Cups. They got everything, sodas. Gatorades, man, they got everything in there. So we sit in there, I get a chance to meet this chick for the first time. I'm a little blown away by the fact that Shorty is huge, like 6'7", 350, hey, hey, how you doing? Hi. But she came correct, she came with those quarters. And you know, while in visitation, I can't get up, I'm a prisoner. If I get, if I get up, I, I run the risk of getting shot, kind of, not really, they don't. But you know, they're gonna, they're gonna end the visit. Hey, yo, you can't get up. You can't get up unless you, you ask to either go to the bathroom or go to the picture project or, or, or whatever. Go take a picture with your loved one. So she would have to get up to get me anything. And she would. She got me like two big ass burgers. I got the, the fish sandwich. I got the M&Ms, the Skittles, the Reese cups. I got the Pepsi, the Mountain Dew, the Dr. Pepper. I am fucking everything up in this visit. I mean, the food at least. <laughs> Gobbling it down. I ain't had a burger, a real burger, what they call a big as burger. I ain't had one, man, all I've heard, I've just heard rumors about these burgers and how delicious they are. And here I am getting to experience this for my own self. We're talking about everything under the sun. Oh, you work at Title Max, huh? Hey, did you get that burger? You, you heated it up in the microwave for me? Thank you, thank you. But it doesn't take long before it kicks in that all of a sudden, like a fucking Bruce Lee kick to the stomach, ah yeah, boom, them bubble guts hit me like thunder rolling. Garth Brooks and the thunder rolling. Boy, my joint hit the Jake break. Oh, shit. Now, mind you, your visitation at this facility was at the least an hour long. But if the visit wasn't busy, if you didn't have people out there waiting, dude, they let you ride. They let you ride for maybe a couple of hours. Now, mind you, I done already smoked all shorty girl's quarters like they were some meth that somebody done traded a catalytic converter for. That shit gone. And she is just talking about everything. And I get to the point where I'm just like, oh shit, this visit is uh, still going on. We've been in here for like two hours strong. And boy, there's something wrong with my stomach. My shit is knocking. Like there ain't no oil in the engine of the whip. Bloom, 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 bloom. I'm like, oh my God, boy. I start to just rocking. Uh-huh. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow, title max? You've repossessed how many people's vehicles? Ruined their lives? <laughs> that's, that's interesting. That is interesting. 
I'm okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm just, just blown away by the conversation. Just blown away by this conversation. Look, it got bad, okay? There was no way in hell I was about to shit my pants in this visitation room. I, I just, I, I wasn't going to do it. Not in front of her, not in front of all these other girls up in here, neither. And, you know, prison probably looking at me laughing. Hey, look at dude rocking right there. It's his first time being a visit. He done ate that burger, and that shit done hit the uppercut, the Hadouken, in his stomach. He got to shit real bad. Yeah, he do. Yeah, he about to shit his pants. Watch. You know, Shorty and me, even though this was a going nowhere situation, we crossed a major threshold in them first two hours. Because I had to be candid with her. I said, listen. I know we just met each other, but I've got to be honest with you. I know this is probably going to sound a little crazy. No, I'm not getting ready to say I love you. N fuck now. No, I don't feel anything at all except for, you feel something? Except for the fact that I've got a shit so bad. So bad. Yeah, that's what all the rocking's been about. Sparks? No, none. Feeling just in my stomach. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm a, a connection. Yeah, yeah. To, to the restroom right over there is what I'm feeling. Can you please go ask that officer as quietly and as incognito as you possibly can if I can go use the bathroom? So shorty girl would get up and she would go ask the officer if I could take a shit. Now, at this facility, the bathroom ain't got but like a half door. You know what I mean? So what I'm getting ready to do, everybody's going to be watching me. So I got to go up in here as smooth as I can. <laughs> yeah, I see you right there. Yeah, hey. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah, I'm up in here too. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I just, I just got to go bathroom real quick. Yeah, hey, I'm going to holler at you when we get out in the rec yard. They'll tell you all about it. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah, for sure. So I get up into the bathroom. I shut the little half door. I start lacing up the toilet seat as fast as I possibly can. I drop my pants as quickly as I possibly can. And I hit that commode. And I'm just trying to, like, duck my head down because my head's right here. I know everybody's probably watching me like, yo, dude is taking a shit during visitation. Wait, what girl he in? Oh yeah, I'd do the same thing too. And I'm trying to be so quiet. God, I'm trying to be so quiet. But I know my stomach's about to explode. It's about to be napalm coming up out of my ass. So I try to hit the flush, but this ain't one of them porcelain toilets right here. We got the stainless steel jetpack flush button on this joint. So as soon as I hit it, I got to time this just right. I got to time this just... So I hit the button. And I know they could hear it. I know they could hear it. Kept that button going. Ain't no coming out of there trying to be smooth after that. You've exhausted all of your cool points and your smoothness on the walk to the toilet. Coming out of there, you just gotta, hey, you just gotta, you just gotta roll with the punches. Woo! God, hey, whoo, damn. Yeah, I'm good. Hey, appreciate that. Sat back down and uh, carried on. Carried on. Ironically, this chick would still end up coming to see me for a little bit until I finally said, look, I don't see this going anywhere. I do have a friend of mine I'd like to introduce you to. And uh, that's how we parted ways. But ain't much like having to shit so bad in these situations that I've shared with you in this video that you just have to, no matter what, no matter where. And uh, all that. You just got to go. Folks, that's all I got. And I do apologize for how descriptively disgusting this probably was, but I at least hope I was able to make this pretty damn entertaining. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about this, and as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!